Yo, yo, smallmouth crush, 12 pound Tom knee, or is it 24 pound Tom knee? <laughs> We're out here trying to catch a few smallmouth. Tom hooked up early with a little guy, but it's a fish. Drop shot, and we're gonna talk about drop shot in a day, and catching two pounders. Are you giving away that's my... all you're good for, bro. Are you giving away my secret bait? <laughs> it's all coming up. Nice. That's what happens when you go out with smallmouth crush. You catch them. Look at that. It's a nice one. That's it. On the gacho spirit, Chad. There you go. Hey guys, don't let Tom fool you. He's using that uh, flatworm. Since the elites were in town, everybody said get the flatworm. I was using the spirit, Chad. So we're up here drop shotting. What rod are you using? This is a G Loomis NRX drop shot rod. Nice. 610 though. 610. I like a seven footer, bro. That's all right. And we're just looking for some fish here. Uh, here's what we're doing. Up front at the bow, you're going to see a fish show up and then Tom drops down to it. It's as easy as that. So I broke off on a fish and I grabbed Tom's NRX. Give it a try. 610 though, dude. It feels like a nice rod. I, I can see why Eric likes it. This is a small one. He's hooked in its side. That's not even a big one. That's tiny. But I got to experience the G. Loomis phenomenon. I'm gonna go back to my St. Croix. Well, we caught a lot of fish today. Uh, well, it's still early, but we have one decent fish and we're catching a lot of three, three and a halfs right now. And if they're biting and we're having fun, we're gonna stick it out for a little bit. I'm hoping we'll find some bigger fish. Why is it taking so long to get to me? It's not bad. No. Little guy. He's just under four. Three and three quarters. What'd you catch him on? God, you're a spirit chat, bro. Again? Again. Why do you have flatworms sitting over there? They're scented. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> right, Travis says he's got a state record. What state are we in? <laughs> I'm just saying it's a stud. All right, this is a... This, is a... Uh, this time I decided to throw a Ned rig, a green pumpkin purple. I'm using a seven foot medium light rod, five pound test braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And I thought he was bigger than that, but he's five. I can feel him. I can feel him down there. No, he's not even five. He's like... State record? He's not, but that's a big one. Come on, that bro. That's a big one. I'll tell you what, if they would have let us in that derby earlier, that would have been a good fish. Yeah, so we pulled up at the ramp today and there's like 30 bass boats. And I'm like, there's a tournament today? But they wouldn't let us in. Oh, they saw you coming. They were like, uh, uh, uh not gonna no, happen. We know you, bro. Not gonna happen. So that was a deep water deal, you know, 20, 30 feet of water. And, uh, that Ned Locks head, it's got a little bit of extra weight here in the hook. And I just kind of let it sit and sit and sit and sit. And all of a sudden you hear, you feel that little tick. Boom. Okay. Well, the Ned strikes again, but I'm going to show, I'm going to share with you guys something a little, a little secret that I started using this year after I get this fish in. He's a big one. I'm going to sit down like Tom and Eric. That's what those guys do. Just sit here. Well, Hey, 
that's a beast. That's a beast. That's a fatty there. It is. Nice. The Ned. That's right. So, real quick, let me let him go. Here's what we're doing. It's called the sauce Gobi flavor. It's green. So I was getting some bites on the Ned rig, but I wasn't hooking up. And so I put a little of this, this sloss on it and uh, straight up Gobi smell, dude. I love it. It's pretty powerful. And um, I'm not sure what the deal is with it, but does it work? Does it give a little extra? Obviously, uh, it's more of a confidence thing. I do like, I do like to put scent on my baits, um, especially during tournaments, just to see. But uh, it's it caught a couple good ones so far today. Sure did. Okay. So we found them suspended, and throw, I threw a little uh, shad shape deal on an eighth ounce head. And busted up another decent bass. Straight up. Well, this is supposed to be a drop shot video, dude. How about just a couple different ways to catch smallmouth today? Does that work? The sun is, the sun is beating down right now. That's okay. That's okay. We're just having fun. Oh, dude, look at that. <laughs> Come on, dance for me. Dance for me. Dance for me. Huh. Uh. Boom. Get away that. That's a good one. Cool, cool. Let's get back at it. I'm all hung up. I put a heavier weight on on my drop shot as a co-angler. Oh. So it gets down there first. But you got a pig on. You were, yeah, you you were you were messing around with the trolling motor. And you just dropped down to the fish I was <laughs> trying to catch. That's true. Oh, come on. It's probably don't lose him. He's probably 7. Oh, look at Whoa, that. Look at that pig. Look at that pig, guys. Oh my gosh. Nice, dude. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. It's all right. Yeah. We'll take them. Flatworm. Everybody loves the flatworm. It's a nice chunk. I think so. Hey, we also ran into my buddy Matt, Matt Stasiak, in his new walleye boat. Going to conquer the big lakes and that tuna tuna rig, I guess. Good one. Good fish. Yeah. What's up guys? Small brush. Good job today. Day two. So day two of uh, just fun fishing with Tom. We had a little bit different conditions here. You got cloud cover, high winds. I break off on a rock pile. So I let Tom control the boat. What does he do? Rams my Garmin Force trolling motor into a buoy. And he didn't even have to hit the pedal. We were fine. But nope.
So the fish were uh, scattered. They were, you know, two or three fish per group. We would drop down, catch one or two of them, and then we'd have to go searching for some more. But good quality fish today. Nothing too serious. Not fighting like that. So this this fish, which appears to be a pretty good one, looked like it was suspended about five feet. Yes, yeah, so you can see these fish here up off the bottom. And so you, oh, nice. That's a good one. And so you raise your drop shot up and uh, convince him to bite. That's it. Brought it up about five feet up, put it right in his face. And shook it. <laughs> I got a little nervous here. He kept looking. I kept fishing. He kept looking. Border Patrol. I want to make sure we don't have any COVID on the boat. They got their masks. Oh, wait. They don't. They don't. But I tell you what. If you cross that Canadian border on water and you bring that COVID over, you're in big, big trouble. Uh, this will be the wrap-up for our just our fishing. Can we turn the truck off? No, it's fine. So guys, we're back at the ramp with fun drop shot and a little Ned rigging. And uh, we put some fish in the boat. It was tough though. Uh, they weren't grouped up like we hoped. We did a lot of idling. But it was just cool to get out. Remember that little tip I said about scent? I think it's important. And uh, don't discount that Ned rig out deep as well. Because it, uh, it could salvage the day like it did for us. Tom's got to go home. Back to PA. I'm going to be up here for a little bit longer. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave any likes and comments below. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.